Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday midweek service. In 1 Peter 5, 7, it says, Cast all your worries to God because he cares for you. Do you believe in that? Because I believe in that with all my heart. Let us bow down in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful evening to worship you, Lord. And please bless all the souls who are watching this live and bless the message. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Heavenly Father, O oh Lord, thank you for gathering us here today, O oh Lord. Thank you for bringing us together under your name, O oh Lord. We are blessed knowing that uh, you're constantly with us and within our presence, O oh Lord. Um, we pray that this worship has opened up the hearts of the people that are watching, O oh Lord, so that they may um, hear um, what Pastor my dad has to say, O oh Lord. Please help them, O oh Lord, just be um, one with you, O oh Lord, and no matter what, just stay strong within your spirit. We love you, Lord Jesus, and we pray. Good evening, good evening everyone. Welcome to our midweek service. I really hope that everybody is doing well at the comfort of your ho own home, no? And uh, I cannot express enough how much I really miss all of you, our uh, actual gathering. But let's just, just continue to pray to God about all this uh, situation. But we are grateful on this uh, technology that we can get to uh, worship the Lord still and uh, we can hear the message of the Lord. We can share the message of the Lord through technology. So praise God for that. And we are continuing on our series in the study of the book of Ezekiel to the life of Ezekiel and to the ministry that was given to Ezekiel by the Lord. And uh, the Lord is the one who have ordained Ezekiel to be, not to be priest, because the, uh, actually he's supposed to be a priest, but the Lord called him to be uh, a prophet of the Lord. Prophet where? Proper to the people of Israel, particular to the people of Judah who were exiled uh, to Babylon. I know. Uh, because the the the, Ju uh, the the Judah, which is the Israel, the Jerusalem was already besieged by uh, Babylon, and this is the second exile already. And the Lord told Ezekiel, Ezekiel, you have to relay a message coming from me to the people of Israel that there will be a destruction. Actually, they are already being destroyed already because of their idolatry, because of their sexual immorality, because of their pride. Those three things that they are in sin wherein the Lord was really, the hand of the Lord was with the people of Israel. You know? And the Lord is telling Ezekiel, Ezekiel, you have to relay a message to the people of Israel who are exiled to Babylon that there will be a destruction that will happen. And uh, but I'm letting uh, I'm letting you know that when you relay this message, nobody will listen. How would you like that? You know. So now in here in chapter four, beginning chapter four, the Lord have made Ezekiel to play role, you no, know, to relay a message. I want you to relay a message to the people of Israel by playing a role playing. Who among of you, when you were a child, nung bata pa kayo, that you have played uh, bahay-bahayan, you know, uh, kochi-kochihan. You know, I remember when we are uh, small, you know, we are playing kochi-kochihan nun. But we don't have a car, you know, just like toy car, we don't have those. The cars that we are using, you know, chinelas. And then we go to the buhangin, you know, uh, a, a, a file of uh, a dirt. And then we make a trail. Gagawa kami ng trail and then we're in our sleeper would would go to that trail and it seems like we are driving a car, you know. And very similar with those role playing, play play or uh, house house play, ang pinagawa ni Lord kay uh, Ezekiel. Why did the Lord uh, have him do such things? It's because he want to relay a message through this um role playing so the title of our uh, message is Ezekiel play a role ano yun yung mga role na pinagawa sa kanya and then uh, we are picking up on Ezekiel chapter 4 uh, but before that you know I just want to tell you this story that there was uh, a woman by the freeway no? when I was driving itong woman na to you could tell that she is uh, mentally disturbed no and uh what she's, she does is nagwawali siya doon sa freeway, on the side of the freeway, as if she is sweeping the, the floor of their house. And then she has a, a rug, she is wiping the, the wall on the freeway as if she is really cleaning. And you can tell that she is uh, uh, mentally disturbed. And one time I saw her also that she was talking to the car passing by as if she's telling all these cars something you know and um 
with that, knowing that, and thinking of, of that lady, the Lord made Ezekiel to, to do a role playing almost similar to that. And when the Lord asked Ezekiel to, to perform and to do this uh, symbolic act that we call, there are uh, uh, actually about 17 symbolic act uh, that the Lord have made him do. No? He was doing it in public. He's not just doing it uh, just, just to himself, by himself, inside a, a room. No, he's doing it in public wherein everybody can get to see this uh, Ezekiel doing this very weird act you know would you imagine kung yung pastor ninyo ano you will see your pastor on the street parang nagta traffic enforcer no nagta traffic enforcer dun sa sa gitna ng kalsada on on uh, tapos uh, ang ang suot eh parang gulagulanit na damit ano what would you think ano is that your pastor hindi ko pastor yan no? so you might say that ano so uh, almost similar yung pinagawa ng Lord kay Ezekiel and would you imagine the reaction of the people to Ezekiel while he was doing such things and bear in mind that while Ezekiel was doing all these things if you can remember on our past study that he was muted that he is not talking over here he is just doing a role play parang pantomime Ma, he's doing over here and people trying to figure out what he is trying to do so they are saying naku nasiraan na yata ng ulo itong si Ezekiel but the Lord asked him to do it to uh, to give an impact to the people of Israel itong mga dramatic act na pinagawa ng Lord kay Ezekiel now we're gonna take a look at some of them uh, today, as much as we can, in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 4. Ano? So, uh, beginning with uh, verse 1, ano? sabi dito, Now, son of man, sabi, take a block of clay. The first symbolic act is, for, uh, first, you get a block of clay. Parang ganito. Ayan, I got this one from our garden. Ayan, uh, block of clay, get one like this, and then, uh, all, all, remember, while he was doing this one, he was lying down. The Lord had made him lie down on one side and the, on the other side. So, sabi niya, take a block of clay, put it in front of you, put it in front of you, and draw the city of Jerusalem in it. So, you put Jerusalem or you make a drawing of Jerusalem in the clay. Then, lay a siege on it. That means you put like a, a, a wall, put a wall around it. Erect siege works against it, build a ramp up to it, set up camps against it, and put uh, battering rams around it. So it, it has wall and it is besieged by uh, uh, a stick. Yun ang gawin mo. So meron kang clay and then maglaro, para siyang naglalaro. Para siyang naglalaro ng bata, no? yung, yung kunwa-kunwarian. And then... On, on, on the next verse, ang sabi niya dito, Then take an iron pan. Take an iron pan. I don't have an iron pan, but this is the pan that I have. Ayan, kuha ka ng iron pan. Imagine. And plate, uh, place it as an iron wall between you and the city. So that's the city, and this is you. You put a, a wall. Parang make it like an iron wall that you cannot get to see the city. Ganyan. And then, turn your face towards it. Turn your face towards it. Ang sabi niya, it will be under siege. You shall besiege it. Oh, titignan mo ganun. You shall besiege it. This will be a sign to the people of Israel. So, ibig sabihin, itong symbolic act na pinagawa ng Lord sa kanya. Very weird, no? So, and then, this is a sign for the people of Israel. Anong ibig sabihin itong pinagawa ng Lord sa kanya na to? And he's doing this one in public. Matagal eh, seven years ang, 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 ang ginagawang role-playing dito. No? So what does that mean? Sabi niya, this will be a sign to the people of Israel. Anong ibig sabihin nun? So the brick signifies Jerusalem. Sabi niya dito, besiege it. Ibig sabihin, pinalibutan siya. Pinalibutan siya ng, ano? 
na Babylon. That they will be besieged. Alam niyo yung besieged, ibig sabihin, walang makakalabas, nobody will be able to go outside in the city because it is besieged. Quarantine. They are quarantined inside the, the Jerusalem that to the point that they will starve in, uh, starve in hunger. Kasi nobody will be able to go out, no, no food will come in. Magkakatagutom doon. So sabi niya dito, this will be assigned to the people of Israel. So the people of Israel will be besieged by Babylon. Yun ang ibig sabihin nun. And yung pan na nakakover, ibig sabihin, the, the Lord, hin, wala yung eyes ng Lord sa inyo. That you have separated from the Lord. Sabi niya, humiwalay kayo sa Diyos because yung sin of of the people of Israel were so rampant. Ano? Ibig sabihin, pag tayo ay in sin, we are separated to the Lord. Yun ang pinagawa niya kay Ezekiel. And also, kaya ang sabi dito, ano, sa Isaiah chapter 59, verse 2 to 3, Your iniquities have separated you from God. So, ibig sabihin, yung kasalanan natin, it's the one that separated us from God. Parang itong itong iron pan na, na binigay ng Lord. Ano? At sabi niya dito, Your sin have hidden His face. Natakpan yung face ng Lord, ng iron pan. So, hindi niyo nakikita ang Lord. Ang the Lord eyes is no longer on you because it's covered nung kasalanan ninyo. No? And sabi niya dito, so that you will not hear God. Remember, Ezekiel was muted. Hindi siya nagsasalita. So that means your sin, hindi niyo nakikita ang Lord because of your sin and you cannot hear God. That's why the Lord made Ezekiel muted. Seven years na si, si Ezekiel was not talking over here. Your fingers with guilt, your lips have spoken falsely and your tongue m- uh, muter, uh, mutters wicked things. So, yun ang, 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 yun ang situation dito. That's why this signifies the separation between you and God and you are not able to hear the voice of the Lord. Ano? So, yun yung symbolic act, unang symbolic act na pinagawa kay Ezekiel. He was doing this one in public. Very, 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 very weird. No? And then in verse 4, sabi niya, Then, lie on your left side. Okay, habang gumagawa ka nitong uh, itong clay na to, itong ganito, sabi niya ganon, you lay on your left side. So, nakalay down siya sa left side tulad ng drawing natin kanina. Let me see that. Um, ayan, ganyan, ganyan. You are lay, laying down on your on your side, sabi niya dito. Uh, lie, then, lie on your left side. And put the, uh, the sin of the people of Israel upon yourself. You are to bear their sins for the numbers of day you lie on your side. I have assigned you to the same number of days as the years of their sin. So for 390 days. Naka-lay down lang siya dun sa left side niya. Ito left side. Naka-lay down siya sa left side niya for how long? 390 days. Sabi niya, you will bear their sin, the sin of the people of Israel. For 390 days, nakahiga ka. Would you imagine 390 days? Nakahiga ka lang doon sa left side mo? Ang hirap no, ano? 390 days. Siguro naman may, may break time naman siguro. May, may toilet break naman siguro to, ano? Magto-toilet muna siya. Pagkatapos mag-toilet, hihiga na naman siya. Ha? Ah, pero ang hirap. 390 days at yung one day yung one day is equivalent to one year so 390 years <laughs> ang ibig sabihin ng 390 days that you are bearing the, the sin ano? you are bearing the sin of the people of Israel ibig sabihin yung kasalanan ng Israel pinagtitiisan mo and is saying here pinagtitiisan kayo ng Lord. 390 days, pinagtiisan ng Lord yung kasalanan ninyo. The Lord is waiting for you to repent on your sin. Naghihintay siya, hirap na hirap na siya, on, lying down on His left side, waiting for you to, to repent on your sin. Nagtalagang hintay ng hintay. Pero the people of Israel, of course, they never repented on their sin. Ano? 
And then, ang sabi niya dito, after you have finished this, lie down again at this time on your right side. Kasi yung left side kanina is for the, for the northern part, the Israel. Eh ngayon, sabi niya, pagkatapos ng 390 days, you lie down on on the other side. Sabi niya, on your right side this time, and bear the sin of the people of Judah. Remember, the Israel was divided into two, northern part Israel and southern part Judah. Alright, so pareho naman silang naging makasalanan sa Diyos. But, you know, is, uh, the Israel part, the northern part is worse because no, no nobody was righteous. There's no righteousness over there. Pero sa Judah, there are some. Ano? Kaya dito, ma makonti lang. 40 days lang. And yet, you know, they still uh, went away from the Lord. They have sin of uh, idolatry, you know, a sexual immorality and sin of pride. Ano? That after siya naglay down sa left, right naman. So, bear the sin of the people pagtiisan mo yung kasalanan ng mga people of Israel sabi niya dito for 40 days in a day for each year ibig sabihin yung 40 days one day ng 40 days is equivalent to one year so 40 days means 4 years ah uh, 40 years 40 years mo pinagtiti is sabi ng Lord 40 years kung pinagtiti isa ng kasalanan na to uh, ng mga people of Judah and I was waiting for them to repent to their sin and yet you know they did not repent to their sin and then sabi niya dito verse 7 turn your face towards the siege of Jerusalem and we bear arms prophesy against against her sabi niya ganun so ngayon after kang nagtiis ng 380 days and 40 days dito sa kabila naman sa right naman after noon hindi pa rin sila nag-repent. This is what you're gonna do. Sabi niya dito, you go turn your face towards these people of Israel and then, sabi niya dito, you prophesy against these people. You prophesy against these people of Israel. Ano? Sabi niya dito, I will tie you up with rope so that you cannot turn from one side to the other until you have finished the days of the siege. Parang wala siyang choice. Ano? Talagang pag sinabi kong left side, magli left side, kaya tatali kita doon sa left side mo para uh, hindi ka ma-force na lumipat. That is difficult in the sight, uh, in, on, on the side of Ezekiel. I, I, I'm imagining, ano, uh, Ezekiel uh, facing all, the, and, and, and the Lord made him do such a, such symbolic act. Ang hirap siguro on the side of uh, Ezekiel over here, no, that he, he's, Forced. He is uh, mandated that he is, he was commanded to do uh, uh, a such a act, no? But we can see if it's difficult uh, on the side of Ezekiel, who was called as a prophet, you know? Imagine the feeling of the Lord, the creator of heaven and earth, the Lord, the, the, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, no? Uh, he is bearing the sin of these people, you know? It's not just the people of Israel and the sin of you and I because the Lord is talking to you and I right here already, no? Sabi niya, to, sabi niya dito sa verse 9, Think with, also that, that is the symbolic act. Number one is gawa ka nung, nung clay, you know, that symbolic act. And number two, you lie down on your left and then uh, you lie down on your right. And he's doing this one, actually he's doing this one on public wherein everybody could get to see him do these things and yet he is not talking, he is not explaining what he was doing, you know. So if you are the one seeing him doing this one, siguro masasabi mo rin, nababaliw na yata yung tao na to, no? So, so verse 9, sabi na, th there's another one that he made him do, no? Take with and barley, beans, and lentils, millet, and spelt, put them in a storage jar, and use them to make bread. Gagawa ka ng bread with this, uh, uh, this uh, ingredients. Yan, yan, lahat ng ingredients na yan. And you have to make bread for yourself. Sabi niya dito, you are to eat it during the 390 days you lie on your side. Habang nakalay down ka sa iyong side mo, no? Uh, yun lang ang kakainin mo sabi niya 
weigh out 20 shekels of food to eat each day. Alam nyo yung 20 shekels of food each day, tong bread na to, yun lang ang kakainin niya. The whole time, the 390 days, 90 days that he is lying down, itong bread lang na tong kakainin niya. Alam mo yung 20 shekels of food, konti lang yan. Siguro yung isang slice ng tinapay, siguro kalahati lang nun, or about one fourth lang nun. Yun lang ang kakainin. That's the only food that he will eat in a day. That means there will be starvation. So he's telling the people of Israel over here, the message is telling that there will be a, a, a famine, that there will be a, a poverty, that you don't have any food to eat. I know because you have turned away from the Lord and the, the face of the Lord is no longer on you because of your sin and because of that, walang blessing. Ano, sab sabi niya, ano? And then sabi niya dito, also measure out six of a eel of water and drink it at set times. Pati yung tubig mo, konti lang. Alam niyo yung, yung, um, Yung tubig na iinumin niya, siguro mga isang baso lang or kalahating baso lang sa isang araw. Yun lang pagkain. Imagine, one pot slice of bread and isang basong tubig in a day for 390 days. I would imagine as a kid na ngayayat talaga siguro siya ng bonggang bongga dito. No? Eat the food as you would loaf of barley bread. Bake it in the sight of the people using Using ano? Sabi niya, pag ibibake mo to, when you break this bread that you are about to eat, you cook it in public wherein everybody could get to see you cooking it. And when you cook it, sabi niya, you cook it using human excitement of fuel. Anong ibig sabihin? Ang panluluto mo tain ng tao. Would you imagine? I'm sorry for those people who are eating, you know. Dumi ng tao. Ang ipanluluto mo dun sa tinapay na to, would you imagine, ano, na, uh, uh, you know, you could be uh, speechless, ano. Alam nga, napaka, napaka weird ng mga pinagagawa ng Lord. Doon sa mga prophets, actually there are a lot of, several prophets that the Lord made them to do such very weird act. Tulad halimbawa ni Isaiah. Alam si Isaiah, May pinagawa si Lord sa kanya. That makes you wonder. And sometimes, you know, uh, many uh, teacher or many pastor, they're having difficulties uh, uh, teaching these lessons, Ezekiel and also part of Isaiah. Kasi parang very, very weird yung, yung, yung presentation. And you don't know how to present it. And then you say, Ano ba naman yung mga teaching? Ba't ganyan, ano? So, also, with Isaiah, there is, in Isaiah chapter 20, let, let, let's read this, no? Yung pinagawa ng Lord kay Isaiah. Ang sabi niya dito, At that time, the Lord spoke through Isaiah, son of Amos. He said to him, Take off your sackcloth. Kasi during that time, sackcloth lang ang suot niya. Pero sabi niya, Take off your sackcloth from your body and the sandals from your feet. And he did so, going around street and barefoot. Would you imagine? The Lord made you take off all your clothes, everything. You are not wearing anything. You are totally naked. Walang chinelas. And then you are walking around the city. You are walking around Carson, you know? Naked. Sabi niya, then the Lord said, Just as my servant Isaiah has gone street and barefoot for three years. Would you imagine yourself? No, wala ka talaga. And then, you are walking around and you are doing it for three years. Siguro huling ka ng police, di ba? Nowadays, ano? Uh, the, you know, dadaling ka na sa mental hospital or something like that. But it's so weird. Yun ang pinagawa sa ni Lord sa, as a, uh, kay Isaiah. Portraying, portraying to the people of Israel. People of Israel, that is you. 
who are naked you are walking around naked you don't have the robe of righteousness in you you don't have the righteousness of the lord in you that you are yes you are alive yes you are walking you know but and yet and yet you are naked walang righteousness yeah would you imagine kung alimbawa yung pastor niyo no i cannot imagine it no walking around you know you, you might say differently you know you might look at uh at the people of God very differently you know but the Lord had made Isaiah to do these things so that the people of Israel your message na ibinibigay ng Lord to the people of Israel it will bring an impact to the people of Israel a message that something that the people of Israel will never forget you know and I'm telling you Amazing itong mga story na to, no? So if you think yung, yung Bible, reading the Bible is boring, you know, you could be wrong. Kasi it's so amazing yung mga ganitong story that Bible is not boring and yet it brings an impact and yet it brings, you know, makes you, makes you think. So if you think Bible is boring, I'm telling you, you haven't read the Bible yet. You have not read the Bible yet, okay? So let's continue on Ezekiel. So verse 13 tayo dito. The Lord said, this, In this way, the people of Israel will eat defiled food. Remember, sabi niya, magluto ka ng bread. Ito lang ang kakainin mo. And there's nothing that you will eat more. And also, use it, it, cook it, sabi niya, with, with human, dumi ng tao ang pangluluto mo. Kasi sabi niya, it talks about the people of Israel that they will be eating defiled food. Kasi the people of Israel, meron silang specific food na lang talagang kakainin. There is a food for them that is uh, uh, not clean, unclean and clean food for them. Na hindi ka pwedeng kumain ng animas na biyak ng paa, yung mga all those things, may kalis, na walang kaliskis, you know, all those things. But I'm telling you, sabi niya, the people of Israel will eat something uh, that are defiled food for them. Ano? Among the nation um, where I will be driven them. So, mapupunta sila doon sa land, which is the Babylon nga, and then they will be eating all this uh, unclean food for them. Ano? And then, verse 14, Then I said, Not so, sovereign Lord. Pero sabi naman ni Ezekiel, Not so, Lord. Para naman napaka-gross naman nun na talagang, you know, dudumi ako, tapos yung dumi ko, yun yung panluluto ko. Parang, it's so weird. Sabi niya, sabi, Then, sabi na, Not so, sovereign Lord. I have never defiled myself from my youth until now. I've never eaten anything found dead or thorn by wild animals no impure meat has ever entered my mouth sabi niya lord wala pang pumunta sa bibig ko na talagang dirty so so much naman tong pinapagawa mo sa akin lord so what did the lord do is that the lord uh, made him uh, uh, gave him a little bit uh, uh, parang oh, sige na nga sabi niya very well the lord said I will uh, let you bake your bread over cow dung instead of human excrement. Um, excrement, ano? Ibig sabihin, sabi, okay, imbis na dumi ng tao, okay, dumi na lang ng cow ang gamitin mo. Sabi ni Ezekiel, okay, at least mas maganda na yun kaysa dumi ng tao. Dumi na lang ng cow. At least, uh, ang kinakain ng cow, eh, damo naman. You know? so, parang ganun. So, the Lord gives consideration. You know? Sometimes, you know, in us the lord will give a lot of consideration in us ano if we will come to the lord ano and then uh itong uh, verse 16 then he said to me son of man i am about to cut off the food supply in jerusalem so sinasabi niya with that portrayal of that little food that is about to eat that little water that he's about to drink I am cutting off the food supply to the people of Israel. Yun yung pinuportray ng Lord. The people will eat ration food, no? Tulad halimbawa ngayon, no? COVID, no? At the, you know, a lot of people, uh, when, when we get to see the news, and a lot of people uh, who have lost their job, and 
uh, there's no food on the table. So we are relying, most of the people are relying on the ration food, no, that we line up too long just to, to have food. But, you know, that's not even worse. Uh, the, the situation back then, you know, to the people of Israel, it was so worse that their food would just be ration food, you know. In, in anxiety and drink, a ration water in despair for the food and, and water will be scarce. They will be appalled at the sight of each other and will waste away because of what? Because of their sin. So that is what sin does to us. That's why it says for the wages of sin is death. It brings torment. It brings punishment. It brings death. Yeah? It seems like the people of Israel are already separated from the Lord. It seems like they're alive but they are dead already. They're dead in spirit and also they are dead in their life. They are away from the Lord. So what we are probably, if we will sum up, this chapter four, uh, chapter four, you know, we were able to finish chapter four, one chapter today, you know. So this whole chapter it talks about uh, the the sin of the people of Israel over here, and the Lord made uh, Ezekiel a uh, portray a symbolic act to portray the suffering of the Lord. You know, the Lord is uh, waited. For the people of Israel that he turned on one side waiting for the people of Israel to to repent and on the others the right side also that he's waiting for the people of Judah and yet they have not repented to their sin and because of that you know the Lord's eyes is against them that there is a, a iron iron pan that was uh, separating them from from the Lord, you know. So, um, so at the moment, uh, probably the message that the Lord wants to give to us is that if we are living in sin, if there is unrighteousness that is living in us, in First John, uh, it, it says there, uh, repent on our sin. That the Lord is faithful and just to forgive us. To cleanse us in all of our sins and in all of our unrighteousness. So probably if there is a sin that is living in us, it is opportunity for us. Probably if the Lord is speaking to us, you know during that time, Ezekiel was not able to speak. But aren't we grateful right now that the message of the Lord is being spoken to us? The people of Israel back then, they did not listen. To the prophet they did not listen to the message but would you do the same or would you listen to the voice of the lord let's close our eyes and let's pray father god at this moment oh lord and our heart oh god is wandering right now lord our hearts right now is wanting and to be in your presence, O Lord. And Lord, this message that you have given us, O God, it brings impact to us, O Lord. It brings message to us. And Lord, we pray that your message is not just being heard, O Lord. It's not just being understood, O Lord. But your words will come to our hearts that we will accept your word, O Lord, and it comes to repentance from the wrong doings from our sins and we pray that our eyes will turn back to you lord that our life once again O lord will be pleasing aroma of worship to you thank you o god for this evening thank you o god for your word in jesus name we pray amen amen and amen have a blessed evening, everyone. God bless.